Rob Davidson from California writes, my father had dementia and my older brother. Nothing scares me more than this, not even cancer. What can I do to beat the odds? Is there a surefire way to stave off uh, dementia? You know, I understand his concern because it, it affects actually a third of people over 65 now. So the incidence of having dementia of various different kinds has gone up. Now the good news is, is that there actually are a lot of things that we can do to help lower the risk. And even if you develop a little bit of it, we have found some things that you can do to help reverse it. You know, I just, re I just read recently that, you know, getting early education, you know, like really having a stimulating education and then trying to maintain a cognitive function, you know, a stimulating, mm -hmm. you know, sort of brain puzzling, teasing, process is really healthy for the brain. Have you discovered that as well? Yes. So there's actually a variety of different natural approaches and, um, you know, doing stimulating exercises for your brain. This does not mean like sitting in front of the television set and drinking beer. <laughs> that is not a stimulating exercise. But actually doing things like crossword puzzles, learning new languages, um, being social is uh, a big um, you know, issue too, because when we try, to, when we isolate ourselves, um, it's something that um, is not healthy for us in a number of different ways. But being social is very stimulating for us. Exercising very, very important for brain health because we're increasing the oxygenation of the brain. And then, in addition to that, it makes a difference what we eat. So with every chronic disease, including dementia, what we know from a fundamental basis is that oxygen-free radicals and inflammation play a key role in helping to create them and to fuel them. Let me just ask you a question here. I'm, I've been confused about this, the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia, and you know the presence of amyloid plaques that have been found with, with uh, Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Are they also found in dementia patients? Well, there's actually many different kinds of dementia. And we get a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease by doing scans of the brain. And we see, as you mentioned, amyloid plaques. So these are um, kind of an abnormal uh, deposition of, it's a connective tissue type of um, substance. And it will show up on brain scans. So that's Alzheimer's disease. But more often than not, what we see are other forms of dementia. And they can have many different kinds of um, reasons why they're there. And some of them we don't even, you know, we're not even able to diagnose what's going on. But again, most of them, what we know the processes are inflammation and oxygen-free radicals. So if we do things that help to minimize oxygen-free radicals, like by taking antioxidants or eating a lot of plants that are high in antioxidants, it helps to minimize that. And inflammation as well, which is a process that's involved in every chronic disease, and eating same types of things is going to reduce inflammation as well. So these amyloid plaques, I just want to understand this, are they the same as the arterial plaques that we find associated with cardiovascular disease? Um, they're different. So in the cardiovascular disease, what we see is we get cholesterol deposits, although inflammation is actually something that plays a huge role. And a lot of the um, cardiac people are saying that um, our cholesterol levels aren't as important as our inflammation is. And with Alzheimer's disease, although the plaque is made of different material, um, it has some similar processes. Now, what's interesting about both plaques is that they found that there is iron present in the plaques in the brain and iron present in the plaques in the blood vessels. Where does that come from? And that comes from eating too much red meat. So you know we can take iron if you're a menstruating woman, but if you're not a menstruating woman, if you're a man or a woman who's gone through menopause, you do not need to take um, extra amounts of iron. And we find it in too high a quantities in, in red meat. So that's another reason why red meat is not so great for us. Well, I know you've talked a lot about the value of good healthy fats. Is this also an important matter when it comes to you know, maintaining a good brain function? Absolutely. So um, eating a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, which is found in flax seeds and deep water fish like uh, salmon, very, very important. I actually recommend that everyone take supplemental omega-3 fatty acids every day for, for your best health. And then in addition to that, they found that coconut oil is something that seems to be extremely beneficial for Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. But isn't that a saturated fat just like the saturated fat that's found in meat? You know, we used to think that too, but now we got smarter and we found that because it's a vegetable saturated fat, it works differently in our body. It doesn't have the same effects and it has 
has some very wonderful antiviral and antibacterial effects, so extremely healthy for us. Okay, so we've talked about the value of exercise, we've talked about uh, coconut oil, a good omega-3 fatty acids. Did I miss some? Did I miss? Did I leave something out? <laughs> Brain teasers. Brain teasers. Oh. <laughs> you must be losing your mind. <laughs> okay, well, so there's good news for Rob uh, yes. from California. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Dr. Horner, for sharing your views on this important topic. If you have a question about this topic or any other, just click on the link below. We'd love to hear from you.